And it's so nice to welcome on Dan Lynch, professional genealogist, onto the program. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. We we're uh, talking about the 1940 census, another piece of history just released. Tell me, what can we learn from it? Yeah, the 1940 census uh, being released today, it's uh, one of the most historic data sets. 132 million names uh, for anybody who's living in the 48 states plus territories uh, on April 1st of 1940. Wow, unbelievable. So, I mean, a lot of people can reach back into their own family lineage there. Uh, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, you know, it's estimated that about 80% uh, or more of uh, Americans today can connect to at least one person in the 1940 census. And, you know, as a result, you know, we're going to be able to look at the families as they existed at that point in time. And so by going to the1940census.com, um, everybody will have an opportunity to be part of a national service project to look at the images and begin typing or transcribing the names into what will become a freely searchable online index so that uh, it'll make the research available for uh, much easier for everybody um, from this point forward. Wow, so it gives people an opportunity from their own home to look at the actual handwritten census and transcribe it? Yes, absolutely. So wow. the, the uh, digital images will be online and I'll simply look and be able to uh, go field by field and type in things about, uh, you know, uh, people's names, their ages, their occupation, uh, you know, place of birth of parents, uh, and, and all sorts of other information. All right. And so with 100-something million names, though, surely this is going to take some time, right? Well, yeah, 132 <laughs> million names is, uh, is a large data set. And a matter of fact, the project was so large that it took uh, three of the leading companies or organizations in the field of genealogy to band together, archives.com, familysearch.org, and findmypast.com all coming together to create this national service project uh, that people can find at the1940census.com. Now, Dan, I, I want to ask you, you're a professional genealogist. I, I want to know why you got involved in something like that, and, and knowing that, what a day like this means to you. Oh, it's, uh, you know, well, there, there, you know, there was a countdown clock online for quite a while. Uh, many <laughs> family historians, myself included, were really looking forward to this day because it's the first census, for instance, where I'll be able to see my parents who are both still alive. I'll be able to see them in the census as young children. My uh, great-grandparents uh, who immigrated to the United States, I'll be able to see them as American citizens. So um, it's just an exciting opportunity to really kind of connect to, uh, you know, to our own little place in uh, American history. Wow, neat. I remember I, I went to the National Archives, I was visiting D.C., and you go to the bottom level and you can search all this stuff for free, and I remember learning something about my own grandfather when I looked at the 1930 census. He had always said his name was Ben, it's not Benjamin, it's not this, it's not that, but on the 1930 census it said Benji, and then finally he admits, yeah, well, they named me that, but they changed it afterwards. So, I mean, you can learn a lot just from looking back at these pages. So, I really appreciate yeah, yeah, the Oh, sorry, Dan, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say, certainly the Internet's made it uh, accessible for uh, you know, a much wider group of uh, individuals than ever before. Libraries and archives certainly still play a role, but the Internet, uh, I think, has opened it up for many people. Perfect. And we'll have to link folks up, even though we said it a couple times, the1940census.com. We'll throw that on northwestohio.com slash links. Dan Lynch, genealogist, really appreciate your time today. Great. Thanks for having me.